I had a problem with my flat screen TV not turning on. Instead of sending it in for repairs, I decided to fix it. Using time lapse to speed things up, I'll show you how I did it. First, I disconnected and removed the TV from the wall and laid it face down on a flat carpeted floor. I then removed the rear panel screws and lifted off the panel to get closer to accessing the boards inside. I wanted to get a closer look at the power supply board as I suspected it was causing the problem. So I disconnected more connectors, removed more Phillips screws, and then removed the metal protective panel over the boards to gain access. Once the panel was off, I had a clear view of the power supply board. It was the board with the heavy power cable wires that went to the wall outlet plug connector. Then I proceeded to carefully unplug the board. I also zeroed the high voltage capacitors that were present on the board. These on mine read 450 volts. I did this by holding the plastic handle of the screwdriver and shorted the legs of each capacitor together with the screwdriver blade to zero them. I then lifted the board off the chassis and took a closer look. I could clearly see that the tops of two electrolytic capacitors were swollen. One was actually leaking. I decided to replace those as well as the two capacitors that were beside them. From my local electronics store, I purchased four replacement capacitors. See my notes below for details. All four items cost me a total of $3. Using some solder wick, a 25 watt soldering iron and some solder, I proceeded to remove and replace the four capacitors. After marking the bottom of the circuit board, I gently and carefully desoldered the capacitors. You can see that I clearly marked the polarities of the old capacitors on the circuit board. I took this information from the top of the board by looking at the labels on the existing blown capacitors. One must always use the exact same voltage and capacity components when replacing parts on their devices. I had no way of knowing whether the second pair of capacitors were defective by visual inspection, but for the price it was hard to go wrong in replacing them. Once the old capacitors were removed, I had to clean up the leftover soldered residue from the board using solder wick. If this old residue was not removed, I would later have a tough time getting the new ones in where the old ones came out. Now it's time to install the new electrolytic capacitors. I'm careful to pay close attention to the polarity labeling of the new ones as I put them in. Careful not to get solder on any other components, I progressively move up the circuit board one connection at a time, always careful not to spend too much time in one spot. Excessive heat for extended periods on any connection can cause collateral damage to the components being soldered, the board, or anything nearby. Once the connections were all made, I carefully snipped off the long legs of the capacitors and took a quick look at the board afterwards. That's it. I reassembled the TV in the reverse order that I took it apart and fired it up. This repair I did two weeks ago, and as you can see, all is in order. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, I have many more videos for you, so please subscribe.